<clears throat> if you've ever died in the apocalyptic ash cloud that is currently enveloping the entirety of the West Coast, go hit that subscribe button. My voice is a little bit shot. Um, as you guys know, I'm recovering from bacterial pneumonia and bronchitis. And over the weekend, I had to work in the um, uh, outside in the hazardous condition. So because of that, my voice is a little bit shot right now. But uh, we're going to make videos no matter what because uh, I've always gone on camera with black eyes and other injuries that I've received from my job. But the show always goes on, so we're going to continue. It's just going to be a little bit more noticeable because uh, what you guys listen to is me talking. So sorry for the hoarse voice. Guys, a large supporter of the channel right now is Gun Mag Warehouse. So they support the channel monetarily. We're also doing exclusive videos for them. Again, those are going to be coming very soon. And uh, they're pretty cool. So get Max from them and all that type of stuff. If you're looking for a sweet plaid and bags and all that type of stuff, go to uh, Vertex. Uh, they make great stuff. Discount code Grantham, 25% off actually. Guys, thank you for your time. Appreciate you guys. We're going to be going back to our roots today. Those roots being a basic setup video. So the setup video for today is going to be uh, essentials for your range bag. Uh, a lot of people ask me what I bring to the range, how I make my range sessions go smoothly, and uh, over the years I think I've learned a couple things. Uh, certainly I'm not the most expert at it, but I will give you guys kind of how I pack my range bag and what I bring to make uh, my range experience a little bit more smooth and that type of thing, and where I save myself time. Um, as far as range bags are concerned, uh, there's a lot of great range bags out there. I certainly haven't tried them all. Some great range bags that I have tried are from Grey Ghost Gear, uh, Vertex, uh, Kanai. So lots of great stuff out there. There's plenty more. I'm not going to be able to name all of them. Basically, find a range bag that kind of suits your needs and what you need to carry and go from there. My particular range bag is set up for an AR-15. Of course, if you have an AK, SCAR, uh, if you're you know, straight up repping some old stuff with an FAL, uh, you might need a slightly different setup than mine. You're going to be carrying a different amount of mags and ammunition and that type of thing. But just so you guys can kind of get a general idea, we'll talk about my setup. <clears throat> so the range bag that I have is from Go Grey Ghost Gear. Um, this is one of the prototype bags that they made. They now make an updated version that is a little bit better than this one. So rest assured, if you go into their website and buy their uh, range bag, you'll be very happy with it. So let's take a moment and let's talk about what I actually carry in this range bag. So some things you're going to need with you at the range when you go is going to be ammunition. So I think the first thing that most people notice is how I carry my ammunition. So if you notice right here, I carry all my ammunition already loaded in magazines. So I typically take around 24 mags to the range uh, for a total of about 720 rounds or so. Um, I understand that's not going to be everybody's kind of go-to as far as ammunition count, uh, and that's fine. But my big thing with any type of range uh, that I go to is I like to have all of my ammo loaded up because there's just nothing that kind of takes up more time than loading mags. So I actually like to like sit down if I'm like watching a TV show or a movie you know, straight up repping Game of Thrones or something like that. And uh, I'll sit there and I'll just load the ammunition into my magazines as I'm watching. I use a couple different loaders or I'll do it by hand, it doesn't matter. But I have all my mags loaded up and ready and that way I can just load them into my range bag and go when I need to. So that is how I carry that. Now, on the opposite side of this bag, right here we have a Velcro slot. So in that Velcro slot is where I carry my Glock mags or whatever pistol mags that I'm running. Now, if I'm running a pistol primarily, then of course I'll carry the pistol mags. I usually I don't have as much usually as like AR mags, and I'll carry a bunch of boxes of ammo and some type of loader, whether that be uh, some commercial one or something like that, or I'll do it by hand. Just as a quick note as far as how my range setup might change based on what I'm shooting that day. But in any case, the Grey Ghost Gear bag gives me a lot of options. So does the Vertex and a bunch of other ones. Just can find one that's going to be good for you. Now, besides ammo, a couple other things that are important to bring with you. Uh, iPro. So right here we have some, some Oakleys. I also carry the um, Smith Optics. Tons of great iPro out there. These are what I use. Um, to go with the optics that work for you. Uh, as far as EarPro, always carry EarPro. So I always carry Compacts. And then on top of that, I also carry extra iPro and extra um, EarPro uh, when I'm going to the range. Because you always have some guy that will come there and uh, you know, some hick or something like that, and you'll be like, hey, uh, you gonna wear ear pro? And he'll be like, what? And you'll be like, are you wearing ear pro? And he'll be like, what? And you'll be like, are you? And you know, and the point is that they don't have ear pro and they've never worn ear pro in their life, 
because they just don't know. So always carry extra ear pro. You just never know who might need it or something like that. Or if your ear pro for some reason gets lost or something like that. Besides that, I always carry gloves. Um, you never know when you're gonna need to use them when you have like an extremely hot weapon if you're doing all, some mag dumps and that type of thing. And of course, a shot timer. Um, a shot timer being very vital. So um, if you don't have a shot timer, I'd highly recommend it. There are some great ones that can go on your iPhone or Android and that type of thing. So get yourself some type of shot timer. And what goes along with that too is have some way to record your time. So I also carry around a right in the rain notebook and a pen. That way I can record my times in certain drills. That way I can compare them um, as I try those drills out you know, over the coming range sessions and that type of thing to see where my times are. Are they getting better? Are they getting worse? And I can kind of evaluate uh, how I'm doing. So tracking progress, just like um, you would do at the gym, is going to be very important. So make sure you have a both the shot timer and some type of uh, way to record that type of information. So on this particular bag, that kind of encompasses what I have in the main parts of my bag. So really quickly, let's talk about the sides of my bag, which are very important as well. So on one side of my bag where you see this red paracord right here, this is my med kit. So I carry an emergency med kit, it has a uh, soft tea wide tourniquet, um, gloves, a bunch of stuff for emergency type situations. I carry that. I also carry a lot of band-aids, um, some antibiotic wipes and that type of stuff for smaller uh, ouchies and boo-boos that you might get. So a uh, medical kit is always going to, be, going to be important. And you can never go too much on a med kit. Honestly, make sure that you have enough to handle some serious situations because gunshot wounds kind of suck. So make sure you can take care of that. Going to the other side of my range bag, um, I have extra staples, tape, and a uh, marker. So the Sharpie is really important because you might need to mark your targets as far as where your hits have been and that type of thing, depending on drills. Uh, tape for taping up holes in the target. Of course, staples are your staple gun. Now, on my case, um, I have a private range, so I keep my staple gun at my range. But if you don't have a private range and you're traveling, which I think is most people, uh, you might need to carry your staple gun with you. So make sure you have that kind of stuff on you. Okay, moving to the front of the bag right here, there's a large zippered compartment. So when I pull that down, I carry a lot of very essential things. So one of the most essential things that I carry is I do a lot of suppressor shooting. So this is just a piece of non-flammable material from Burnproof Gear. Um, it just allows me to grip my suppressor when I take it off when it's super hot. Um, just small things you don't think about because most gloves will melt uh, when suppressors get hot enough. So this has been a lifesaver for me in many uh, different situations. So have something uh, that can mitigate heat if you have a suppressor or something like that. So that's kind of more specific to me. Another thing is going to be a cleaning rod. So I have a cleaning rod that can break down. Um, the reason you're going to need a cleaning rod is uh, stuck cases. So um, with a certain ammunition company whose name is Freedom Munitions, I got a lot of stuck cases, which is one reason why they're no longer on the channel. And they, uh, those stuck cases really suck to get out. Um, a cleaning rod, there's other tools that are specifically made for it. I just use a cleaning rod to knock that out from the... Uh, end of the barrel into it and knock it out of the chamber. So make sure you have a cleaning rod. A stuck case really sucks and will take you out of the fight. Um, uh, you know, I'm typically shooting multiple guns, so if like um, I get a stuck case, uh, it's usually no big deal. I just move to a different gun or, you know, it just doesn't affect me that much. But uh, if I'm just shooting one gun and I get a stuck case, like the whole range session is kind of dead. So especially if you have to drive out like a far uh, way to go and shoot that would really suck to have a stuck case just kind of end your range session So I'd really recommend a cleaning rod of some type Another thing for me is I do a lot of night shooting so I always have a headlamp uh, When you do night shooting you're always like oh I have night vision but you forget that Doing everything under night vision really sucks and if you can have a white light that makes your life so much easier Also you might be shooting and it might be getting dark so that when you're packing up uh, it starts to get night and then uh, if you don't have a headlamp, then uh, life's gonna suck a little bit. So have a headlamp of some type, um, just carry it in your bag, you never, you never know when you're gonna need it. Lube, I always carry lube, because you never know. And I know that there are better lubes out there than Ballastol, but I've used Ballastol for so long, I just feel very comfortable with it, so I use Ballastol. Uh, I know everyone's gonna get mad at me and argue with me about that, but don't do it. Finally, tools. Um, I carry a multi-tool. Uh, in this case, I carry my trusty Leatherman Wave that I've had since selection. And I also carry a hex key set. So this being to tighten down different lights and mounts and that type of thing uh, to make sure that I'm not you know, losing uh, lights. I, I can't tell you how many times 
I've done like, you know, thousand round dumps on a rifle and then like an M-lock mount or a key mod mount loosens up. And then I don't have that tool with me so that I'm not able to retighten those. And I'm just kind of very sad, you know, mostly just sad about life. Finally, a couple of things that I carry with me always are going to be uh, batteries. So I always carry a couple CR123As, um, a couple uh, other batteries for my you know, RMR optics or whatever battery that an optic needs that I have with me out of the range. I carry a couple extra just in case um, it would suck to have you know, your battery die on you and then you don't have anything else. And again, if you have to drive all the way out to the range, then you're kind of just SOL. So a lot of the stuff is kind of mitigation to make sure that I can, can keep shooting. Um, what a lot of people do as well that I don't personally do is carry around an extra bolt or bolt carrier group for the AR-15. It's definitely an option. Um, I understand you're shooting like a short build rifle with a suppressor. It might be a good idea uh, to carry that kind of stuff around because those do crack bolts a little bit more often than, say, a 16 or a 14.5 with a mid-length gas system. So again, kind of evaluate yourself and what you need. If you're just carrying one gun, maybe carry a little extra spares when it comes to your bolt carrier groups. But that is what I carry in my range bag. Uh, pretty simplistic, um, not a whole lot to it. Targets, target stands, all that extra stuff um, is already at my range. So again, uh, that's going to be a little bit different. But of course, that doesn't specifically go into a range bag. But this is how I have mine set up. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys how you guys had your setup or any tips and tricks that you have. Um, love getting knowledge from you guys. Appreciate everything you guys do. I know this is a shorter video, but uh, I get to ask this question all the time. So I hope it was helpful. Um, it may be speeding up kind of how your range session goes. Uh, get in that comment section. Do good things. Guys, range bags matter because you need to be able to train efficiently once you get to the range. And training efficient, efficiently uh, means that you take, your, take what you're doing seriously. So get good training. Um, I know I said it a million times, Bear Solutions, Cogworks, Hilly, Strategic, Esoteric. Get in there, get that stuff. And as always, guys, if you don't look cool, what's the point? I've got nothing else for you. Okay, last thing for you guys. A lot of people have been contacting me saying, hey, um, I'm out of shape, I'm overweight, uh, what do I need to do? Uh, diet exercise, what? Well, I mean both, <laughs> honestly, do both. But diet's really important. Uh, and the big thing is calories. If you're eating too much food, uh, you're going to gain weight. Now, too much food can be a good thing. If you're trying to gain muscle, you're gonna need an excess of calories to gain muscle. And again, I'm not a sports nutritionist. I'm not like a... Uh, you know, an athletic coach or anything like that. So all I can say to you guys is do your research and understand where you need to be based on your goals. But if you're trying to lose weight, a good place to start is start reducing those calories. And a lot of people don't think about simple things like smoothies and fruit as being calories, but that's still calories, guys. You know, look at everything that you do. Simple things as like uh, you know, adding butter to steak and that type of thing adds a lot more calories than you'd think. So track your calories if you're trying to lose weight. If you're trying to gain weight, eat a crap ton of protein. I understand the struggle. I'm a skinny guy too. Get in there, do that good stuff. Guys, I hope this is a little bit helpful for you. Love you guys. Take care.